even though we have these amazing new digital cutting machines, that doesn't mean that we have to ignore and throw out the non-digital versions. They can work so well together and create so many more things that we've never been able to create before. Of course, you can emboss with your Cricut Maker if you have one, but if you don't have a Cricut Maker, or maybe you don't want to go through the whole effort of creating a stencil, you just want to make an embossed item very, very quickly, that's where I really like using my Cricut Cuttlebug or any one of those other types of machines available from so many different companies. Embossing folders and dies are really quick ways of getting incredible results in very short times. And this is one of my favorite ways of using my Cuttlebug as well as any one of my Cricut machines. My name is Kelly and let's get clacking. In Cricut Design Space, I'm going to search for a little box and I'll be able to scroll through the list of projects and all those kinds of options that we have to be able to find the box that I want to make. Now, the box that I want to make is the vellum box. I'm going to give it a like because I think this project is awesome and I'm also going to add it to my bookmarked projects. I'm going to click on it and then at the bottom of the screen, I can see it says customize. So I'm going to click on that and it will open up this project on my canvas. You can do this technique with so many different types of boxes. It's totally up to you which one you choose. Now, right from the beginning, I'm going to select the pen section that is going to be drawn or foiled, and I'm going to delete it because we're not going to be using it in this particular project. So I'm going to do it for both of the boxes and just leave them plain. But if you wanted to foil them beforehand, you could. It might look a little bit too, too busy, but it's totally up to you. Next, I'm going to measure the embossing folder that I have. Now, this is a six inch by six inch embossing folder. So I know that it's 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters. So I'm going to actually add a shape to my canvas, a square, and I'm going to make it 15 centimeters so that I can see what kind of size I'm working with. Now I want to make sure that these few sections of the box are covered by this block. I don't need to worry about the sections at the bottom and I'd actually prefer for them to not be, you know, run through the embossing folder because then it might be a little bit more difficult to actually work with. So I'm going to hover that box over, select both of the boxes because this box fits together and it is two separate pieces, or if you're working with four separate pieces, make sure to have all four selected at the same time. Because they need to line up and glue into each other, they all need to be resized at the same rate. If you resize the one and then resize the other, they might not line up and they might not fit properly. So please make sure that you're selecting everything that you need to resize at the same time. And I'm going to just drag this a little bit smaller, and make sure that this fits inside that little box there. Make it a tiny little bit smaller. There we go. So if I right click on this box and send it to the back, I can see that this entire 15 by 15 will fit in there. So this is now just under 15 centimeters wide, which will work perfectly. And I literally don't need to do anything else in Cricut Design Space. I can. I can delete this little block as we don't need it anymore. And I'm actually going to save this project. I always recommend saving before you start making anything. So I'm going to save as, and I'm gonna type in embossing folder box so that I know that I can use this box with my embossing folder in the future. Before we send it to the machine to cut, I'm going to just make sure that this is going to fit on my mat more easily. So I'm going to hold them up next to each other and select them both. And we can see that the width there is 29.77 centimeters. I could move this one in a little bit and make it a little bit shorter, but it's still about half a centimeter too wide. So what I need to do here is I either need to reduce the size to 29.2 which is not that much of a difference, so I'm probably just going to do that. Or I could cut off part of that flap there, but I'd prefer to just resize it, right click and attach them so that they stay in that same location, and then we can click make it. And you'll see now I can cut two of these side by side and it'll work perfectly. So now I'm going to click continue and wait for my computer to connect to my machine. 
and select the material that I'm going to be cutting, which is medium cardstock. I'm not going to be using my single scoring wheel just because I'm feeling lazy. So I'm going to click on edit tools and here I'm going to change it to the scoring stylus. The stylus is great if you want to just set something up and let it run. If you had to use the scoring wheel, you would have to load in the scoring wheel and then change it out to the fine point blade once that's been scored. And if you have an explore, you won't be able to use the scoring wheel either. So you'll need to use the scoring stylus. So I'm going to click apply. If you have a joy machine, your process will work a little bit different and you won't be able to use the scoring elements, which in this case is totally fun. And now we are done on this side. So I'm going to load up the cardstock onto my mat and give it a quick cut with my Cricut. And then we get to do all of the super fun stuff. I'm going to be using my standard grip mat and placing my cardstock onto it using AC cardstock. It's my go-to favorite cardstock. I will leave a link down in the description. And as always, I'm using my brayer to make sure that it sticks to my mat. My mat needs a little bit of a clean. And now I'm going to be loading this up into the machine as well as my scoring stylus. When loading in the scoring stylus, make sure to open up the clamp, take your scoring stylus, press it down until you hear a click, and then close the clamp again. And then as always, we check our cut before we unload it from the machine. Perfect. As always, we're going to flip our mat over and remove our mat from the cardstock. Whip out our cuttle bug and our inedible sandwich. And I'm going to place the cutout into our embossing folder. You'll notice how I'm making sure that these flaps at the bottom hang out. Now you can also place it on the smooth side or the textured side, it doesn't really matter. Let's do the smooth side, close the embossing folder and run it through our cuttle bug. And just look at how perfect that is. Oh, that noise. And then we do the same for the second one. You can also give the page a light spritzing of water if you want your embossing a little bit deeper. I'm quite happy with the depth of embossing that I'm getting here, so I'm not gonna do that. And here's where you can have lots of fun with inking, waxing, all kinds of different things. I'm going to be using some metallic wax and I will find a link to either this product or a similar one for you in the description because I'm not sure if this is available globally. So all you do is you take your finger and you just rub on it so that you have some of the wax. It's beeswax. So if you're allergic to beeswax, beware. Beware. <laughs> and then you can kind of just go to town on your embossed folder. I always make sure to have alcohol swabs or wet wipes nearby just to clean up my hands when I'm done. Now I'm going to fold on the scored lines which have mostly disappeared but you should really still be able to get a fold. And then we glue our box together. I'm using a South African local jewel bond glue. It's a very strong embellishment glue, but pretty much most craft glues should work. And then we finish off the box by tucking in the little pieces. And then our gorgeous embossed gift box is complete. But if you're looking for a bigger party box almost, check out this video on the screen as it'll take you through the entire process of how to make a nice big party box. Don't forget to subscribe for more Cricut videos in the future. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.